<laughs> let it all out. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kiwekani. And I'm Jade. So today we're talking in this video about the 10 challenges we had at Cambridge University. So these are the things in the last six years we found a bit difficult, a bit challenging. So I'll start us off. So the first thing that I would say that I found challenging is the intensity of the work and yeah. um, having to adjust to maybe not always being the best. So I think it goes without saying that the intensity of the work at Cambridge is it, pretty intense. It's intense, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was a bit of a shock to the system. It wasn't quite what I was expecting. I think it was a little bit naive. Yeah. I think for a lot of people who go to Cambridge and Oxford, you will have probably been one of the um, top people in your year yeah. uh, where you studied previously. So you have to adjust. I think I came with quite a good attitude for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I accepted before I came here that you know I really wasn't going to be the best. I wasn't going to expect myself to be the best. And I was more than happy to be average at Cambridge. That's yeah. carried me through six years. <laughs> Along with that comes sort of like self-doubt when you sort of feel like you're not at the top as you would expect to be. Mm. Um, if you're struggling, then just speak to other people. Some people will be in a similar boat anyway. So. Yeah. So the second thing I think we both sort of struggled with, uh, especially at the beginning, was writing essays. Uh, we both didn't do essay-based subjects at A-level. We yeah. did sciences and maths. Um, so writing our first essays was a big challenge. I think we all yeah. came together and sort of <laughs> shared ideas as to how to do it. Yeah. If you're struggling, then speak to someone uh, you find people in a similar boat and you can sort of share ideas. I couldn't have done it on my own, I don't think. No. no. Um, my first essay was shocking. Yeah. It was an anatomy Yeah, it essay. wasn't great, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good at all, so that's the second thing. So the third thing um, that we found challenging, I think this is possibly more me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, is being away from home. So it is a big thing to do to move out of home. Yeah. Um, medicine at Cambridge is six years. We're fortunate that the first three years, the terms are short, so they're only eight weeks long. Yeah. But then when you get to the second um, half, your terms are very long. You get very few breaks. Yeah, um, yeah. For me, before I came to the university, I'd always lived at home with my family. And it was probably one of the things I was most worried about when I came to university was living really? away from home. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't know, I think everyone has to have their own way how they get around this. I know quite yeah. a lot of people do miss home at points or you know, have to come up with their own coping strategy as to how they're gonna gonna do it. But yeah. what I would say is someone who's very family orientated and very much enjoys spending time with their family, it is okay. You know, yeah. we're very fortunate we live in a world where you can just Skype or FaceTime, yeah. you know. I have a group chat with my mom and my sister, I speak to them at least once an hour probably. <laughs> you know, like That's it, true. <laughs> <laughs> like it is okay, it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. And I mean, it just becomes part of your life. Yeah, plus it happens to everyone, right? That's why we have week five blues. From that regard, I've been okay because um, when I came to Cambridge, it was my second time living away from home. So I was sort of okay and I was mm -hmm. there for people who were missing home. Okay. <laughs> Can we just say that I was actually all right? <laughs> okay, so the fourth thing that we sort of came up with that we struggled with, uh, especially in the beginning, was finding time to do other things. I think it's really important, whatever course you're on at university, to do other extracurricular activities, to relax, and just sort of get out there and spend time with friends. Uh, but when you're doing medicine at Cambridge, it almost feels like you don't have any time. You've got essays coming up, you've got MCQs, you've got things you need to read for, practicals you need to prepare mm. for. So you can feel like you don't have any time, mm. but with time, sort of as you spend more time at Cambridge, you start to feel that you can make time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I wasn't someone who really enjoyed working late at night, but I found that by doing that, I created more time in the day to sort of do rowing and mm. just spend time with friends. Something I'd like to add to that is that for my first term it is something I've talked about before. Mm. I think I saw it more as trying to fit in my studies around my extracurriculars as opposed to the other way around. Yeah. So, you know, university is what you make of it and you have That's to true. do and try everything that you want to and yeah. to make it work for you because if you do just spend your whole time studying, you're not going to enjoy it. You're not yeah. going to be a well-rounded individual by the end of it. Plus so. in six years, you can't just work for six years straight. It's, no, it's and you long. have to learn what's important to you and how you are going to exactly. fit things in. So I think by having that first term where I did anything and everything that I wanted to try, it then meant that I found the rest of it easier because I knew what I wanted to keep mm. on. And I knew kind of where I'd gone wrong, possibly initially with yeah. my time management. So it's a learning curve. Yeah, comes with time. Okay, so number five, and once again, this is possibly more me than Cube that found this challenging. Mm. I was doing things for myself. You know, I, I was quite independent, or as independent yeah. as you can be in sixth form, but coming to university, you do have to do your own laundry, do your own shopping, be in charge of your finances. There's a lot of responsibility you have to take mm. on that maybe you didn't take on as fully before that. Yeah. So I think it is challenging, but once again, it's part of the fun of university. And you know, this is part of you. 
setting yourself up for life so you have yeah, exactly. to like you at some point you're going to have to learn how to do these things yeah. and I think I was very fortunate that I did it here where we have a porter's lodge and people that are always on hand that if you run into trouble yeah. there's always someone here to help you so it's challenging to learn how to do those things for myself but I did it in a very supported way yeah and uh, I'm very fortunate for that on to number six so coming to Cambridge um we knew that we were going to have a lot of formal dinners uh, sort of a lot of black tie events I'd never worn a black tie in my life um, no. before that so I was quite a bit nervous about that um, and I knew that one of the dinners we were going to have earlier on in the year in first year was going to be like a four course meal or five course meal or something mm. and I remember watching videos on YouTube on how to sort of like how to know which the cutlery you move yeah. out then in <laughs> yeah exactly and sort of which glasses belong to you you don't want to drink like the next person's drink and yeah. stuff and you sort of like embarrass yourself and mm. um, so that made me a bit nervous, but you get used to it so quickly. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, plus, you learn the bread and drink thing. Yeah. Um, so if I turn around. Yeah. So your left is your B and your right hand is your D. Yeah. <laughs> we all learned this in our first year. So, which means bread is on your left and you your drink drinks are on your right. right. So that's a handy tip to remember. <laughs> yeah. So I would echo that completely. Yeah. I was. You know, I was quite nervous about that, but you yeah. know, Cambridge is full of people who might be the type you would expect, and also a lot of people who have absolutely no idea what they're doing at these types of dinners. Yeah, everyone's in the same boat, exactly. you know. And it's not—it's not as scary as you think it's going to be. It's fear of the unknown. Exactly. Once we were at Peter House, we absolutely loved it, mm. and we look forward to those dinners now. So. Yeah. So number seven of things that we found challenging is mm -hmm. the decision making that you have to do during the course. Yeah. Not something I'd really thought about before I came here, but there are a couple of big decisions you have to make during the course. Yeah. So the first one being what you're going to do for your part two. This is your intercalated year at Cambridge University that every medic does. Yeah. Uh, you can essentially do any subject you want to, or you can stay in science. And I think I did a lot of toing and froing on this decision. I think I changed yeah, my same. mind quite a few times. You know, do you want to do a dissertation? Do you want to do a project? Yeah. What subject do you want to do it in? Um, I decided on genetics project. Yeah, I decided on pathology project. So that was one of the first big decisions I had to make. The next was, this no longer applies, but we had to uh, reapply to stay in Cambridge Clinical School. Mm. So you had to decide out of the seven to 10 medical schools that you could do your clinical years in, which one to do it in. Yeah. For me, it was a bit of a no brainer. I did want to stay in Cambridge and I'm very, very fortunate and lucky and pleased that I managed to stay here. Yeah, I've absolutely loved these past three years, possibly even more than the first three. Um, I agree. <laughs> so that was another big decision. And finally, in your uh, final year as a medical student, you have to apply for where you're going to be working for F1. So you mm -hmm. apply for your junior relocation. So that decision did take quite a lot of thinking about. I'm very pleased with how it all went, how it all panned out, but yeah. lots of decisions. And if you're a little bit indecisive for <laughs> life decisions like that, then, you know, it can be a bit difficult, but it's something you have to, once again, just learn to do. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. just going with what your gut reaction is and what your feeling is on, a, you know, on yeah. things like that is the most important thing to do. And just having the confidence to know that the last time you did that, things worked out okay. Yeah, plus there's a lot of support in, as you go along uh, with these decisions uh, from your college or yeah. from other people. So. Oh yeah, it's so important to emphasize, you know, yeah. you're not on your own making these decisions. Like I always had people that were on hand that I could have asked for for advice, yeah. whether it be um, other students, people in the years above me, yeah. your director of studies, your tutor, there are so many yeah, people that can help you. Okay, so on to number eight. So this was, I don't know if this was mostly me or we were both similar on this one. It was learning anatomy. Um, because a lot of the words are just derived from Latin and Greek and for me it felt like I was learning a new language like I think of... all of medicine felt like I was learning <laughs> yeah. a new language <laughs> so I struggled with learning anatomy quite a lot like I, I think I spent more time on anatomy than the other subjects just trying to memorize the names of the different muscles uh, and what they mean but once you get the hang of sort of the naming uh, system then it, start, it all starts making sense, so it's easier to learn a bit later on in the year. I think it takes everyone a bit. Yeah, I did use long thoracic nerve as an answer for quite a lot of questions and supervisions. And when you're not on that part of the body, it's a little bit awkward. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I can <get> watch with that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So once you get into the swing of things, it all starts making sense anyway. So if you think about the brachiocephalic vein, um, it tells you that it goes from the arm towards the head. Mm. And once you start getting that, it's absolutely fine. Yeah, once you start making the links. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this next one is one that I wish I'd known right at the beginning. Um, it's just sort of how to manage other people's stress. I know it sounds <laughs> weird, but stay with me. <laughs> so when, you have, when you're in exam term, 
everyone's going through the same thing everyone's extra stressed everyone's got exams so whenever you speak to people it's very easy for conversations to turn to exams yeah. and just add on onto your stress so what one thing we did with my friends was to just say we're not going to talk about exams we're going to talk about other things when we're mm -hmm. sort of together uh, and just use that as time to sort of like de-stress and sort of yeah. relax so that's very important yeah i would agree we did the same thing we had a yeah. rule that over dinner you weren't allowed to talk about exams that was an exam free zone yeah um another thing that me and my boyfriend used to have to try and alleviate stress and not to feed off each other's mm. was that we wouldn't actually talk about medicine together mm. this work <laughs> <laughs> We found this really helpful because yeah. you have someone and somewhere you can go to just talk about anything and everything but not your course and yeah. to be honest i think it's one of the best decisions we've ever made so yeah so number 10 yeah. is one thing that i found challenging is just how fast it all goes yeah i genuinely can't believe that at this point in time i'm sat and i have less than two weeks until i graduate and officially leave the university of cambridge it's forever a sad. yeah it feels very sad um i just don't know where time's gone the yeah. first i think for a lot of the undergraduate terms where they're eight weeks long, I spend a lot of time trying to, you know, count my way through it and be like, oh, you're on week four, do yeah, whatever. And, know. you know, when you lose like the bigger picture and that it just goes so fast. And then, especially for the clinical years, because I feel yeah, like absolutely. the terms are longer. You don't have as many breaks and the placements are longer. So at the moment we're on a six week apprenticeship. And I don't know where the past six weeks have gone. <laughs> like, it, but I say this every time. It's just- racing to the end. It, yeah, it goes very fast and you just have to make the most of every moment. And I'm very sad that my time as a student is coming to an end. I'm really yeah. looking forward to the next adventure as a doctor. Oh, I will miss something for being a student. So. Yeah, I think I'm the same. I remember in first year speaking to my friends saying, we, we won't even think about the end, no. it's so far away. And now this is the end, Yeah. this, this is it. Yeah but it's been a really good journey. Something to point out with all of these things that we found challenging mm -hmm. is that I think they were actually some of the most rewarding things about the course because things that you find challenging and that you yeah. know you have you find difficult to maybe navigate can be the most rewarding when you do, you know, you can confidently go and do your laundry, do your shopping, yeah. organize your finances, you know, you get a really good mark on an essay. Yeah, it's, when you finally conquer it, it's such rewarding. It, yeah, it's, so it's challenging, but some of the things that, you know, you can be quite proud of. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.